Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren, I'm your host, and today we got a great guest, Mr. Mike Steele of Barbecue Champs Academy. He's going to talk about what they are doing, what they're offering, and some of the great exciting classes that they offer. I'll be right back with Mike Steele. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Hey all, it's Darren, and today I want to talk about the Inkbird Wi-Fi Rainproof 4 Pro Barbecue Thermometer that's brand new. The IBB Q4T has a rechargeable battery that can last up to 26 hours once it's fully charged, and you can monitor it from pretty much anywhere with the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that it uses. It comes with the brand new Inkbird Pro app that you can monitor your meat and the temperature of the grill from pretty much anywhere, from your house, anywhere in the house, from your office, from the store, driving down the street. Inkbird makes some really awesome barbecue products, and this one is no exception. Check it out below with the link to Amazon. You can use the code that's listed for $30 off, making it only $70. Check out Inkbird and all their products. Now back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren. I'm your host. And today I've got a real special guest, Mr. Mike Steele. He is the owner of Barbecue Champs Academy, which is an online barbecue competition cooking uh, class uh, academy, pretty much. Um, and I also have some backyard cooking uh, classes as well. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Why don't you explain who you are, where you came from? Yeah, thank you, Darren. I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, Fire and Water inviting me on. And uh, yeah, we started at Barbecue Champs Academy uh, June the 28th last year. And um, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I am a, a competition cooker. I've only been doing it for a few years. My, my big background was drag racing. Uh, I absolutely loved racing. I was in it for many years. Uh, used to do a lot of racing when I was a younger guy on the streets and they started getting some of the racing and stuff where it was more sanctioned for the fastest street cars in the country to go to tracks across the United States and compete. And, uh, there was, uh, the national muscle car association. And one of the big ones that we used to do was down in Orlando, Florida at the world street nationals. And that was the one that really started kicking this stuff off. It got massive because they would bring cars in from Sweden to compete against the fastest cars in the United States. And uh, that was a huge event. Uh, I mean, it was it was a packed house with spectators and cars. Some of the fastest street cars across the United States would all go to this one track. And we went to it in 1993. I think the first year was 92. We missed it, didn't know about it. But 93, we found out about it, went down there and got our feet wet in it and did pretty good. The second year, we went back in 94, 95, started doing better. Um, and then in 96, uh, we was the only one running a small block Chevy. In 96, I built a new engine and went down there and we won it. And uh, right after that race uh, at the Super Chevy Show, Super Street Shootout uh, in Baytown, Texas, we set uh, our first world record. And that was in 1996. So I was always very competitive and very much of an innovator. I always built my own engines and and tune the chassis and stuff like that, setting the clutch and making changes to get the car. These cars were really quick. And uh, in 1997, uh, I developed a nitrous nozzle. Um, I didn't like the design of what I saw that had been out for 26 years. So we was gonna revolutionize the nitrous industry with a, a new nozzle that would have the fuel come out in a different format than just a round hole. Cause trying to get fuel through a round hole, all it does is pisses a stream and it's hard to itemize fuel when it's pissing a stream. So we put a slit in the end of it and it looked like a car wash wand. So when you'd hit it, it would just mist out. And um, so this is gonna be pretty good. Why are they only running six pounds of fuel pressure on these nitrous systems. So I put a EFI fuel pump on it, cranked it up to 60 pounds. And I was like, man, that came out of that nozzle. It was itemized. And I was like, now that's a miss. That's the way we can burn a lot of fuel. The more fuel you can put in an engine and burn, the more horsepower you make. So first race we went, debuted at was back at the World Street Nationals, uh, which we had won in 96. We went back in 97, had the new nitrous system on it. 
set the world record again at that race was number one qualifier just and then from that it just I mean we was one of the fastest nitrous cars in the country and I didn't sell it to anybody I mean it was one of these deals I made it for myself <laughs> and I guess it was about four years later we got a phone call from Edelbrock big aftermarket uh, company that makes aftermarket high parts and stuff out into we know you got a nitrous nozzle you got any interest in wanting to sell it and I was like yep everything's got a price so went out met with them met with Vic Edelbrock we struck up a deal I licensed agreed it to Edelbrock and got it off the ground and they're still selling them today and um, we competed pretty regular up to uh, about 2004 all right, we're back with Mike. We had a little technical difficulty with his internet, but we're back recording again. So you were talking about um, you had sold your um, technology for a new nitrous uh, nozzle to Edelbrock. And right. then, um, let, let's talk about the racing there for a second, because, you know, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with um, that, that type of racing because they, you know, they, they understand IndyCar and NASCAR and that. Um, so you might not, people might not know what you're talking about as far as the streetcar stuff goes. Right. Um, it, it's drag racing. We did a quarter mile drag racing. And, um, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, now was that like just a hobby for you or was that something you actually made money on? You uh, we made money on it. We, okay. uh, they're, they're big, big payouts. I mean, you go to these competitions and uh, competitions, you'd go to these races and uh, like Orlando, you go down there, it was $10,000 purse. So uh, they had pretty good payouts. And, uh, you know, we had uh, all the contingencies that you got when all the decals that you was, you had like, you know, Holly carburetors or Barry Grant fuel pumps or this or that. They were sponsors of those race. So if you won a race, you'd get 300 bucks for every decal that you had on it. And okay. I think if you finished, you know, if you run it up, you know, went to the finals and lost, you got run it up, then you'd get like a hundred bucks. So you could go easily make anywhere between six to 8,000, $10,000 on a race, depending on which one you went to. And uh, so we did pretty good. It paid for our expenses. These cars was not cheap to run. These, these cars were very, very fast cars. Uh, the, the 97 uh, pro street firebird that we have was actually Ricky Smith's old pro stock car. And we converted it, put headlights, tail lights, turn signals, mufflers. I mean, these were fully street legal cars. And at that race in Orlando, you actually had to drive the car uh, 12 miles around the facility. And if it broke and you couldn't get it done in 30 minutes, then you, you got the boot. You was off the, off the qualifying ladder and they replaced you with the next one up in line. So you had to show that they were true street legal cars. And um, this car at the end, by the time we retired, I mean, it ran uh, 660 at 213 miles an hour and a quarter mile. Uh, mm -hmm. it was very fast. Zero to 63 miles an hour in one second, uh, zero to, uh, uh, and, uh, zero to 170 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds. That was at the eighth mile. So, wow. uh, they were very, very fast cars and, um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun doing all the racing. So you sold your nitrous nozzle to Edelbrock and then mm -hmm. where'd you go from there? Yeah. You know, we, once I did, I, it was in 2004. That's when I was, I think that's right about when I lost you. I had been in the pool business still am for 32 years and I got an opportunity to open up a retail store that was about three miles from my house. And it had been there for four or five years, jumped in. I was like, man, this would be a perfect place to start building that business up. And man, that was, that was a big mistake because it took all my time mm -hmm. and all the time that we had free to go to the races, all of a sudden I was stuck at the store. So I just literally did not get to race as much as, as what I used to. And, um, yeah, finally in 2008, it just got to where we couldn't hardly race anymore. Uh, we would only go to two or three races and, and that was it. And then from 2008 to 2012, we just didn't hardly get a chance to run. Finally, in 2012, I hung up the helmet and said, okay, enough's enough. We sold the car. And um, I don't know, just the competitive nature in me, I wanted to compete and do something. And um, I, I told my wife, I was like, you know, I said, I, I just want to compete and do something. You know, that's, that's all I've done my entire life. 
And she said, well, you know, all these barbecue pit master shows are on. Why don't, why don't we get into barbecue? You love to barbecue and you, you, you cook some really good ribs. And I was like, you know, maybe that's not a bad idea. So got on Craigslist and I was looking around for a grill. I'd always wanted a rotisserie, found one guy had already sold it. And he said, what do you want to do? I said, man, I'm thinking about doing some, some IBCA competitions or some barbecue competitions. He said, well, I, I compete in the IBCA, International Barbecue Cooker Association. And he said, uh, are you far from Dallas? And I said, no. Nah. I said, I live in Shreveport. I said, three-hour trip. He said, man, we've got a competition over in Dallas. It's in September. And if you can if you keep my number, call me the week before, you can come hang out with us. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah. So I kept his number. I called him like a week before. And he said, man, I didn't get my new grill uh, done. He said, just go to the competition and just they pull people right off the street to judge and go talk to them and just tell them you want to judge. <laughs> so we went up and talked to her and I, she said, Oh yeah, if you're wanting to compete, you need to judge. You can see what it's all about. And we sit there and talked to a bunch of the cookers. They were so nice and friendly and just, you know, like a really good family of, of just good old boys having fun. And um, so we judged all the food, got to eat all three meats, brisket, ribs, and chicken and stayed for the awards. And then we came back. And on the way back, my wife was like, well, look, uh, she said, I think your stuff was just as good as anything that I've ate. She said, why don't you get into the let's going to start doing some competitions. So I said, that's good. Sounds good to me. I ordered a new cooker. It took them nine months to build it. I had a rotisserie cooker made and uh, ordered it in October, got it in right before the 4th of July that following year. And I had not cooked a whole lot of briskets. I had probably only cooked one or two briskets in my life, but I had really some good ribs I thought was a pretty good rib so I started cooking some briskets I'd cook like four at a time just to see you know flavor profile getting them done right and first four weren't real good kind of tough kind of drugs did another batch of them okay they were a lot better and started learning about the tenderness on them and by the time I cooked another batch of four I thought I had a pretty good brisket I was like this brisket tastes pretty dang good I said look, that same competition that we went to is coming up in two weeks. Let's make that our first one. So we took off and I loaded up everything, made that our first competition. We got there and, you know, it was funny. I mean, we got everything set up and it was just amazing to me, like how many guys remembered that we were there the previous year. Yeah, you, you was here last year. You was thinking about cooking. I said, I don't know how you remembered that, but yeah, that's, that's right. That's us. And this is our first cook off. We wanted to make this our first one. And, and we, uh, we went out and, and I got everything set up and, you know, and old uncle Tony came up to me and he said, son, you just make sure that you just get them timelines right and get to meet the box. That's all you got to do. Seven, seven, seven slices of brisket, seven slices of ribs and, and uh and chicken half and he said you'll be good just make your turn in times have fun i said okay okay <laughs> and uh so we ended up we didn't hit nothing in chicken we had an 11th place rib one out of the top 10 and my wife just said all right you're pretty much well done now because they went to briskets and they started calling out briskets and i'd be dead gum if we didn't have a first place brisket at our first competition we went to oh, wow with 50 teams at an ibca state championship cook off i made 712 dollars and 50 cents and needless to say I was hooked. So, <laughs> uh, so that was in 2013. We only did that one competition. 2014 was kind of our first full year. And, uh, we, we went to about 10 competitions that year. I think we walked in like six out of 10 in brisket. All of a sudden when I thought ribs were my strong point, brisket turned out to be my strong point. We did very well in brisket, still very well in brisket today. And, uh, we, we got through our first year. We had a, about I think three top 10 calls in ribs, uh, six in, uh, in uh, brisket out of the 10 competitions. And uh, the chicken was the nemesis, you know, like what do they want for a, a half chicken, you know? And a couple of guys said, just get it off the rotisserie cooker, put it on a grill. And I think we finally got our first top 10 finished when I did that. And uh, that was in 2014, 2015, continuing to still trying to fill everything out and, and brisket was still doing pretty good. Ribs were kind of all over the place. I just was trying so much stuff. And, you know, you're, you're trying to make them like what you see on TV, but that, that doesn't win. You know, we, we started right. finding out real quick. We're cooking for backyard judges. And, you know, you need to cook good backyard barbecue. 
So yeah, I that, started. That's one thing I want to talk about is you were cooking in the back because there's different divisions in the competitions. Yeah. No, I was in you IBCA. The, it, in IBCA, no, there's no backyard division. Okay. It's, well, it's, I know, like in the KCBS, they got oh, the yeah. division, then yeah. they got the backyard division. No, in IBCA, it's not. IBCA, you go cook against every heavy hitter there, and you better hope, you, <laughs> you better hope you're going to be able to do good. They don't have two divisions where you all cook in one. But just the flavor profile, you've got to get back to more of a simplistic, Right. Good barbecue without overthinking it. And I was overthinking it a little bit too much on my ribs. And uh, if I had kind of stuck back what I originally did when I had an 11th place rib, I would have probably done a lot better. I started trying to change flavor profiles and they didn't like the flavor profile. It was just getting too much. It wasn't what they were used to eating. And uh, were you so trying we, to do like more of a Johnny Triggs rib where you're putting, yeah, you really, and agave yeah, and, you're trying uh, to get too much and that yeah. doesn't win very much an IBCA competition. You can bring a little bit, but you got to bring it balanced because well, it's one of the things hard. I always, when I watched like, you know, the barbecue pit masters and I've seen them do that to some of the, the meat, it, 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 to me, it muddles all the flavors. It, it does. And I know that they're only shooting for that one bite, trying to make it pop. But like when I see, you know, put the parquet and the honey and the agave and the five different kinds of rubs and right. I can't understand how that doesn't just muddle all together and not taste it, anything like meat. You know? Yeah, it, by the time it gets done, it is overdone. Yeah. And, you know, people and we're going to talk about that when we start talking about all these world champion pitmasters that we brought in. But but that's how we got started. That's that was kind of the, the basics. And, and we, we continue to do good. 2017, I really started kind of getting an understanding of, of some consistent stuff. 2018 was probably one of our best years. We had 13 competitions we went to. We had 12 out of 13 top 10 finishes in brisket, ribs and chicken that year. All three of them were very, very strong. And um, we uh, got an invitation to go to the American Royal, cook the invitation. I had never cooked a KCBS competition in my entire life. And I didn't even want to go practice one. I just told my wife, we're going to go there. We're going to have fun and let's see what happens. <laughs> no and expectations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, just, we just wanted to see the experience. There's no way that you would have told me four years ago after when we first started, I'd be cooking at the American Royal. And we did. We went up there and cooked the invitation. And I'll be dead gum if I didn't have a seventh place pork butt in the invitation. Uh, had a 179 56 score. I think we had a 177 and some change on a rib, a 175 or a 177 on brisket, had a 175 on ribs, and had a 170 something on chicken. And we finished 19th overall at 125 teams at the invitation and had a 24th place brisket and cooked the open the next day and had a 27th place brisket out of 500 teams. So, you know, it was a, a fun experience and um, we just had a blast doing it and rolled into 2019. And I had, I had a candle manufacturing company that I had just sold and I was wanting to really get into involved with something for barbecue. And, um, you know, I kept thinking, what can I do? What can I do? You know, the rubs and sauce stuff, it doesn't been just, it's so much competition in that. So many people's doing it. And I just felt like the profit margins being starting out as big as what I want to try to do something was just going to be tough to do. So we kept looking around and I was just like, you know, I'm seeing this sport dying off. I'm, I'm seeing guys that were cooking four or five years ago, three or four years ago that just weren't cooking as much, people wanting to get out of it. The barbecue stuff not growing, the SEA stuff was growing like crazy for the steak cookers. And I was just like, you know, there's got to be something. What can we do? And, you know, everybody's wanting to quit. And, you know, competition, man, I'm telling you, it's done got tough. I mean, these guys are amazingly good cooks. And, you know, if you're behind a little bit, it, it makes it hard to get back in and, and do well. And I was like, you know, what if we were to film – world champion pit masters doing their tell-all competition barbecue cooking classes and uh, I was like now that would be something that you know we could see that would help grow the sport not only in barbecue but SCA because not only do we have barbecue pit masters we had steak grill masters so I, I, I wanted world champions I didn't just I'm not even good enough to be on my own show <laughs> and the guys <laughs> joke at me all the time like are you serious and I was like I don't have a world champion behind my name, so I'm not good enough. So, but a buddy of mine, Joey Smith, had just won the 2019 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and him and Mark Lambert are partners. And I called Joey and I said, Joey, 
I said, man, there's, if there was ever a time that you capitalize on you being a world champion, it's now. And I said, I've got something that I'm wanting to do. And I said, I'm wanting to film world champion pit masters, tell all barbecue classes and put it on the internet. We're going to call it barbecue champs Academy. I said, are you in on this? And he said, Oh my goodness gracious. Yes. He said, our sport needs something like this to help this thing grow. And I was like, awesome. Don't tell nobody. I got to make another phone call. So my next phone call was Robbie Royal with rescue smokers. I figured why not have somebody that won, you know, not necessarily a world champion, but obviously a very well-known name in the barbecue industry or because of barbecue pit masters and him winning that. And he's won two Georgia state champions. I mean, the guy's just a phenomenal cook. I had talked to Robbie uh, a couple years prior. As a matter of fact, I had wanted to go to one of his classes one time. It was just so sneaking far away from Shreveport to Georgia. And I said, man, I don't really need help with anything but ribs. And he just kind of gave me some pointers of what to do with some ribs. And I did it. And I'd be dang if we didn't hit a fifth place rib right off the gate. And uh, so I, I kind of talked to him, told him what I was wanting to do. And I told him, I said, Robbie, I said, I'm wanting to do a tell-all class and, and, and film all these world champion pit masters. I said, I would love to have you aboard on this. And he said, you know, I've, I do a cooking school a couple times a year. I've, I've wanted to do something like this. But he said that there's just, it's just too hard to set all this up. He said, man, I am all in on this. He said, yes, count me in. So uh, right off the get go, I'll call two people. I've got two amazing cooks. Um, I've got a buddy of mine that does barbecue. He was real big into the state competitions, Alan Newton. I called Alan up and Alan was like, you know, what do you want to do? And I told him and he said, Mike, I'd be honored to be part of that. So I had me my first state cooker. Uh, I had another girl that was here in Shreveport, in my own backyard, Shauna Rapolo. She was the two-time female cooker of the year in SCA. I think that was in 2016 and 17, and run, run it up world champ to the world championship the first year she cooked. And I didn't know her, heard of her, but my, my lady at the bank knows her. So I called, I, I said, Shannon, I need you to get me hooked up with Shauna Rapolo. And she said, what are you doing? I said, I, I can't tell you, but I'll tell her when you're here because I need her to sign a non-disclosure agreement because I don't want nobody getting letting everybody out what we're doing. And she said, okay, right. I'll, I'll arrange something for you. So she, she said, well, why don't you meet me at the bank, you know, Wednesday at, at 8.30 in the morning and she'll be here. And I said, okay. So she came in, I introduced myself to her. I said, Sean, I got something really big. I think it's fixing to revolutionize the barbecue and the steak cooking. And I said, I know you know Joey Smith, and Joey Smith is involved. And I said, I'd like to tell you about it before I do. I got to have you sign this non disclosure agreement. And she was like, That's fine. I, I, I'll do it. What, what's going on? So I told her, and she, I said, I want to film not only barbecue pit masters, but steak grill masters. And I said, I'd love to have you on board. And she said, Oh my gosh, I am so in. So four phone calls, four people in, and that was the start of me doing all the filming and getting this thing going. And um, it now, was let me, probably, let, now let me stop you right there. Yeah, now, uh -huh. those are your first four. Now, how, did you have any that said no, that they didn't want to do no, it? Or, no? no. Okay. Uh, for, so from there, uh, Joey Smith, about two weeks later, was at a competition with Corey Mikes. And well, Corey Mikes is a two-time world champion. He's one of the American Royals. Dad, Danny Mikes, is probably one more barbecue competitions than, than we could shake a stick at. And uh, I called, and he, Joey went up to Corey and said, Hey, Corey, do you know Mike Steele? He said, yeah, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook. I see him posting, you know, and he said, man, he's fixing to do something to revolutionize the barbecue industry. And it's like, well, what is it? He said, I can't tell you. He said, what do you mean you can't tell me? He said, I'm under a non-disclosure agreement. And he said, well, tell me what the heck it is. He said, just call him. I can't tell you what it is. And he said, all right, well, give him my phone number. So I called him, told him, uh, you know, that we had something pretty big going on and I'd like for him to be part of it. And I said, if you are interested, I'll send you a non-disclosure agreement. He said, well, send it to me, send one to my dad too, and get us both on the phone. So I sent one out to both of them. They signed it. I got them on the phone and Corey was like, Oh my God, I am so in on this. This is amazing. So that was, that was the start. We had Corey and um, you know, it, and I, that was enough for me to start filming. So when we literally launched this class, we had Robbie, we had Joey, we had Corey, we had three barbecue people, we had Alan Newton, and we had Shauna Rapolo for our steaks. And we launched it on June the 28th, 2019, a little over a year ago. And, um, you know, 
I wanted to make the classes very informative. I'm right there by them. I want to engage them. I'm wanting to ask them questions. I'm wanting to dig as much information out of these guys as I possibly can. These are not some boring class that he's sitting up there in front of a camera just talking and carrying. I wanted interaction between myself and the pit master. I come across it. I don't know anything about barbecue. I know, okay, this, that, because I'm trying to ask questions that if somebody doesn't know, if this is the backyard cooker and you, you they're, they're talking about intramuscular fat and this and that, and like, okay, let's talk about this. What is it? We're looking for the fat in the meat. Why do we want fat in that brisket? Well, that's marbling. That marbling is flavor. That marbling keeps it juicy. That marbling makes it tender. So we break all this stuff down in every one of the proteins. Why are you doing this? What are you doing that for? What's the purpose of this? And it's basically to educate them because they're talking to as if people already know what they're doing. I came across to them like, guys, I want to reach out to the backyard cooker. We right. need to educate the backyard cooker to cook the most amazing barbecue ever. And so when I'm in these classes, they're broke down. It's not one long nine hour video. Every video is broken down by meat. So if we take brisket, well, how to select and trim a brisket, you know, which rubs to use and how to apply, you know, we, it, that's a video. Every one of them is separate videos broken down into full detail with three camera angles. We have a camera that we talk to. We have a camera that's literally two foot in front of the food. And that allows us to go in and just have that nice close up like you see on the food network. We have an overhead camera that's shooting straight down on it. So you have three different camera angles and we're constantly moving these camera angles around to keep you engaged, keep the conversation going. And they, they just, they, you know, when I was sitting here watching them after my film crew edited and sent all that stuff to me, I was like amazed. I was like, man, these are so entertaining and they're so good and they're so packed full of knowledge. You can't help but learn from what these guys are doing. So when we launched this deal on June the 28th, it was a matter, I mean, it went across Facebook. It was just viral. We launched it. All the barbecue guys started sharing it. This thing went across Facebook like crazy. And we immediately started selling classes. And uh, I mean, it was like crazy at the amount of classes that we were selling just right off the get go. And I think the biggest thing was, was literally probably within a week and a half, I had people that were buying classes that were coming back and buying more classes and buying more classes. And I knew then that we had something that was very successful. And as um, soon as we got it launched, Joey said, we need to get Mark Lambert involved. So Mark Lambert is a six time world champion and talked to Mark. Mark said, oh yeah, I am so in on this. So we got Mark and you just passed him. And then, you know, scroll on down a little bit. Then after we got Mark, you know, Corey Mike's new Sterling, uh, talked to Sterling and said, Sterling, you know, we need to get you. And I, I talked to him. He said, man, I, I am so in on this. We had Lee Hickle. Lee Hickle had just won the IBC Cooker of the Year. Uh, it was his first year of cooking. That guy's an amazing up-and-coming cooker. He just finished the second year this year, last week, and he finished number two in the points uh, championship. And uh, that's pretty amazing to win it the, one, the first year. His second year, he finished second. And I'm telling you, I think he would have ended up winning number one again if COVID hadn't hit because – there was a lot of teams, IBCA changed the rules this year that they only took your top 12 cooks. You can cook 40 competitions, you're only taking your top 12. A lot of guys cook 30, 40 competitions. Lee only got 19 competitions in because of COVID, and he was only a couple hundred points behind. One grand champion would have put him back in first place. And um, so he is an amazing cooker. And then after that, we got Craig Sherry with Texas Pepper Jelly. And we released his classes in January. And then uh, about three weeks ago, David Bosco with Butcher Barbecue, I contacted him. He came on board. So, uh, and then the steak cookers just continued to roll in. We had Shauna. After Shauna, we got Tom Machado. And then that was our three that we had for last year. And then in February, we brought in John Lindsay and Terry Roan. And uh, we, we launched both of their classes. We launched John's in February. We launched Terry's. Uh, I think it was in April, two amazing cookers 
that have done so much for the sport of, of SEA competition. We've got two new co cooks that we're in talks with as of right now. So we're going to just continue to grow this, uh, this uh, academy of world champion pit masters and state grill masters. And, you know, Darren, one of the things that I, I, I picked up really, really quick on was the ability that these guys cook, the way that they go about cooking. I started noticing it's it's not this necessarily one bite barbecue. It wasn't something out of bounds. It wasn't something so sweet that you couldn't eat it. It was just dad gum good barbecue. And I and after about the fourth one, I think it was Mark that I had here. I was like, Mark, I was like, I've I've had all y'all's barbecue, and I said everything is like balanced barbecue. And he said, keep it simple, stupid. He said, we are trying to cook to where it's a little heat, a little sweet, a little savory. And he said, that's, we're trying to stay in that box. And he said, when we can cook barbecue like that, we win world champions. And I started noticing they were all like that. And I think that's what people sometimes, they think the competition barbecue is something that you can't eat for the backyard. But I'll beg to differ. When I've hate these guys' food, I mean, it. there's not a single one of them that you couldn't give me four or five slices of their brisket and four or five bones to eat on for their ribs and some chicken because it is just so good. It's like just the most flavorful, nothing out of bounds, nothing so sweet that you can't eat it that hurts your teeth or anything like that. It's just good barbecue. And I, I think they picked up on it when they go to start winning these world champions. You know, you, you, the judge is usually no more than – IBCA, it's people right off the street. I mean, right. yeah. there's nothing. It's, you better cook backyard barbecue. KCBS, I mean, yeah, that judge may be trained for a certain way and the taste and texture, but they're still a, they're still a, a backyard – they still like backyard barbecue at some point. still has to be good, yeah. That's right, and it doesn't need to be out of bounds. And that's what we're kind of noticing with these guys. So we, we really broke the classes down. So when I said we are going to reach the backyard barbecue just as much as the competition. So when we trim a brisket, we trim it, okay, here is a backyard trim on this brisket. If you're cooking KCBS competition or IBCA, now you can go to the next level. And we'll tell them, if you don't, if you don't want to cook that, you paid for the video. If you want to watch the full trim, watch it. You're going to learn some amazing stuff that they right. do. But yeah. here's the trim for the backyard. Here's the trim on ribs for the backyard. Here's the trim for a pork butt in the backyard. Now let's take it to full blown. So we, we progress through the class. When you're watching the trim, here's the trim for the brisket on the backyard. Now let's go to competition. Brisket, pork butt, rib, all of it's the same. So we're teaching them along the way. And um, I think that's what has made it such a success because we, we joke a lot about, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. I had a guy post, oh, I can get all this stuff for free on face on YouTube. I was like, yeah, you, no, you can't. You're not going to get what these guys do. These yeah. guys have got so many dead gum tips and tricks and secrets up their dead gum sleeve. There's things that you have never even thought of that these guys do. And it's never been revealed on Facebook, I mean, on YouTube. And, you know, I look at it like this and I joke with them. If the guys on YouTube were so good at what they did, they'd be out at competitions making money because the guys that are good, they make money doing this. Right. And, they're, and not, uh, they're, not, they're not spreading it out on the videos either. And it's like even exactly. when I've had Harry Sue on the show before and talked to him and, you know, a lot of the stuff that he does, he likes to share it now and he does, he can still go compete. But watching a Harry Sue video and then being Harry Sue is totally different. Yeah, you know, because you know he knows the little the little things that will make yeah. it better. You know, and he it's hard for him to really show you that, and, and he right. has the nuances after being in so many competitions. But yeah. you know, he can show you the basics. But right. you're right, you're right about having the the backyard trim and the and the competition trim because I used to watch a lot of those videos and go. He just threw out 10 pounds of brisket. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> laugh. Yeah, we laugh at like, don't freak out. Don't freak out. He's fixing to trim this thing, and it's going to go from this to this, you know, making it smaller. But he'll tell you, look, save this. If you're a competition, save this. You can grind this up, makes excellent hamburgers, this, that. You put it right. all kind of – so we don't – they don't waste the food. They tell you how to go about utilizing it. 
but you know, it's, it's amazing at what you can learn. And we've had so many backyard cookers that have taken the classes that ha have, are cooking some of the most amazing food that they've ever cooked in their life. They said, I thought I was good, but I am nowhere near what these guys were. And then when I learned the techniques and the flavor profiles and how to put all that stuff together, I became an incredibly good cook and they're cooking some amazing, amazing barbecue. I'll tell you this, it, this is a funny comparison between Barbecue Champs Academy and YouTube. <clears throat> like I said, I started Barbecue Champs Academy because I wanted to see this sport grow. I really did. I wanted to see barbecue grow. I wanted to see the state classes grow. About four days after we launched Barbecue Champs Academy, I had a guy that's over in East Texas, about 60 miles from me, bought Corey Mike's All Access class. And um, I saw that he had purchased it. And three days later, four days later, it was coming up 4th of July weekend. We met over at a competition in Russ, Texas. It was a state championship cook-off. He was there. Craig Sherry was there. Uh, I don't remember how many teams, pretty good bit of teams. And I went up to him and said, hey, how you doing? He said, doing good. I don't, I, if you don't want to, if you want to remain anonymous with barbecue champs, fine, you can. We got a lot of people though, that have shared how well that they have done. And uh, so I said, well, I hope you do good. He said, man, I, I really like the videos. I said, good. And, and we were saying this, he was just at my trailer. Nobody heard it. I, I didn't want to say anything. So he cooked, he ended up having like award time came. He had an eighth place chicken, man. I was so happy for him. Cause this is a guy that he did not have a lot of top 10 finishes. He'd been cooking about a year and a half had right. not had a lot of top 10 finishes. So came uh, ribs. He had a second place rib. I think that was the highest call he had ever had in a year and a half cooking ribs. I think he finished third or fourth overall. He made $600. He paid $5.99 for the class. I was so excited for him. <laughs> he got and his money thrilled. back. Yeah. And I was like having to hold back because I just, I didn't want to say anything. And I went over there to him after everything was over and all our guys were all hanging out and congratulating everybody, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I looked at him and said, hey, congratulations. And he said, oh, man, you don't have to be quiet about it. Everybody already knows that I took Corey Mike's class. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, man, I said, I am so excited. I've been over here about to bust at the seams. <laughs> I was so excited for him. And everybody was like, are these classes really that good? And I said, what the heck are you asking me? Here's a guy that just got through taking the class four days ago and he kicked our butt. And I said, you're wondering how good the classes are. I said, these classes are freaking amazing. So he goes, he didn't even have time to, to get the stuff to cook the brisket. So he goes to his next competition. He had a fifth place brisket, a ninth place rib. I think he had a 14th place chicken. He said, man, it was my fault. I cooked the chicken. It was like 205 degrees. I blew the half chicken apart and still had a 14th place chicken. He goes to his next competition. And I don't remember, it was all four meats for IBCA, which is rare. They cook pork butt. He had a first place, a first place, a second place, a fourth or a fifth place, and got his first grand champion. Wow. And he's already up $1,900 at this point. Goes to his next competition, drops off all three tickets. And here not too long ago, right before COVID started, that was kind of coming to the end of the season. Right before COVID started, he got his second grand champion. So, and then here two weeks ago, we cooked at a competition, had a first place brisket. So, I mean, and he's probably done made over $4,000 in a year competing at these competitions. And he told me, he said, you know, he said, I had watched every YouTube video out there for brisket, ribs, chicken, you name it. And he, and we got him on tape. We went to a competition. He was there and we had our film crew there and he literally spilled it out. It's actually on our Facebook page. We, we got a little interview with him, but he said, I had taken every, or I had watched every YouTube channel. It didn't matter which one, the best of the best, all these guys, I never did good. I don't think I had, but I think he only had one or two top 10 finishes in a year and a half. And he's taken our stuff, two grand champions, multiple top 10 finishes. And he said, there is no comparison of what's on YouTube compared to this. And I was like, man, you are my poster child. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that kind of information. But we have had a lot of backyard cookers that has jumped over into this and have just absolutely killed it. So, oh, yeah, And that's one thing too I want to talk about because if you're an up and coming or you want to be a competitor cook, the, those classes are great. But you also have 
you know, a class just yep. for people back- who want to do it in their backyard. Yeah. So we so actually- I started doing some of those, those videos and right. I'm, I'm very impressed by, by what's in them as well. And like I said, that, that to me, I, I, I don't, I love barbecue. I like attending you know, mm-hmm. competitions. I just don't want to go and, and, and participate because it's usually a long weekend and it's long, it's a hard. lot of, you know, the equipment and moving, yep. you know, RVs and I, I'm just not into it. There's a lot right. of people that are, but, Oh yeah. But it's I love cooking in my backyard. And so right. Right. Able to, to get the backyard class and, you know, which is, you know, something more along for me. So that's, it's great. Yeah. We, uh, it took about four or five months before we finally got the backyard people convinced that they needed to start buying these classes. And I said, let's do something guys. I slide back up a little bit, go back up. So I called those guys right there. Now that is an elite group of guys. We've got Mark Lambert on the left. That's me right there next to Mark Lambert. Second one on the left. Lee Hickles got the blue cap. He was our IBC cook of the year. The peace sign up, that's big boy Sterling uh, Smith with Luke Booty Barbecue. Craig Sherry's next to him. That's the guy that owns Texas Pepper Jelly. And then Joey Smith was the one that won the uh, 2019 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo along with Mark Lambert. They cooked as partners. So I called them and I said, all right, guys, y'all are all in this deal. I want to see if I can get all of y'all in here at one time. And I said, I want to do some championship backyard barbecue recipes. I want, I want some killer throwdown stuff. I don't want no cheap. I want some good stuff. So we literally like threw some recipes together. Everybody cooked four, five guys cooked four classes a piece. And I'm talking about like, you know, Sterling Smith is a lamb champion, two-time lamb champion over in Australia. So he cooked French rack of lamb. He took a tri-tip caprice, uh, uh, tri-tip caprice. He did a bread pudding. Uh, he did the, the grilled shrimp with the avocado salad. We've got baked beans. Got uh, We've got turkey. We've got uh, amazing turkey. A pro tip that I've never even seen done that Craig Sherry did on the turkey. We got a port wine brine ham. We got fried ribs. We got rack of, uh, we got a, a prime rib, uh, Texas beef ribs. That was the one I was wanting to say. An herb roasted chicken with an Alabama white sauce that Mark did. He did true tacos al, uh, al uh, a pastor where he shaved the pork butt and actually marinated it in the real Mexican spices and stuff. And it was some of the most amazing food that I'd ever ate. And you got all 20 of those recipes for $99. And man, when we put that out, people started buying those classes left and right, especially with all this COVID stuff going, people staying at home and you know, there's most people on, what do they cook? Hamburgers, hot dogs, burn up some chicken on the grill. And that's about it. These are elevated dishes. And I told him, I said, no $10,000 cookers. We cooked them on a $59 old Smokey. We cooked them on a pellet cooker, a Green Mountain Grill pellet cooker. And then we utilized, well, I think Mark cooked some the, uh, on a PK grill. And we could have done that the same on the little uh, old Smokey, just because that's what he cooked the tacos El Pastor on. And uh, we did two 22-inch WSMs. That's what we cooked the turkey and ham zone and the uh, prime rib and the beef ribs, because it's a four, three-hour smoke. And uh, so it was just backyard grills and we showed everybody how to use them, how to set them up, whether it was a direct or indirect heat. So all that is in the videos and it really has helped people. They started watching those and they saw just how good the food was. Well, now that really got them over. Okay. This is amazing. Now I want to know how to cook the brisket, the ribs, the pork butt and the chicken. So they started going in and buying those classes yeah that's what i was going to say that's a kick that's a kickstarter that's something yeah it was it's more of like a sampler okay that's right i want to see just how good these are but i don't want to spend the big money that's right on the expensive class i want to see how they are first so that's what i that's how i look at that is like it gives you an idea what these guys have to offer you know and then you can go all right now i want to go and see what you know mark lambert's got for for Cause I liked what he cooked, you know? So right. yeah, it's, it's right. So it was, it was, it was a good way to get them in the class so they could see just how good the food and the food is amazing. Oh my gosh. I ate so much. It took us a day and a half to film that man. We were running around here. That was a lot of filming to do in, in a day and a half. And I was eating so much food because I'm constantly eating everything that they're tasting, trying to taste what the flavor profiles is. And, and it was funny when you got five guys like that together, there was no one guy going to let anybody else outdo <laughs> anybody. It was like a throwdown for these guys. And they laid it on the line and cooked some of the 
best food off of just grills that I had ever had in my life. I was blown away. And uh, so it's, it's definitely uh, changed the people that were on the fence. Now, you know, you can go in and, you know, you can get one pit master class for 249 Indian, any class that you want. You can add a second one for 150. You can add another class for 150. If you add the last class, it just knocks off a hundred dollars. So you can, instead of 699, you get all four of them for 599. And uh, so you can, if you buy all five, all four meats and get the all access, we even created a private Facebook page for the barbecue guys. So if you have a question, okay, I'm stumbling on this or my grill, how help me set up this grill. How cool would it be to have a Mark Lambert or, you know, or a Robbie Royal where you can just reach out to him on Facebook in a private forum and, and see what he's doing. And he's, he still throws little tips here and there. Hey, I'm changing up this, I'm doing this. And you have access to be able to ask these guys questions. I've had some of them, they couldn't answer it through Facebook, pick up the phone, they'll call you. All right, let's, let's help you out. That's, that's the benefits of this. They, they are there to help you cook the most amazing barbecue ever. And I think to me, that is a, a true bonus of, of what we've got going on here. So, um, and I do not want to not mention my state guys, because I'm telling you, the SEA stuff is blowing up. The, the State Cook-Off Association is, is just wide open, growing like crazy all over the world. They got it in Japan. They got it in Australia, all these different countries. And, um, you know, our state cookers, John Lindsay and Alan Newton had a five-way bypass on a heart surgery. Toward the end of the fall, he really didn't get to cook a whole lot. Shauna didn't get to cook a whole lot last year in the beginning of this year. And it just kind of had where some of my cookers weren't out. So Ty Machado, he's only 18 years old, he, 17 years old at the time. He's still in school. So he wasn't able to cook a whole lot. But, man, I'm telling you, we brought John Lindsay in and uh, Terry Roan. They have, they have, they're out in the front. They're, they're really out a lot cooking. Shauna now has, has got a chance to get out and start cooking this year. Alan has now finally started being able to get out and cook this year. And I tell you what, there's so many people that's taking these classes. I'm – We've had so many take Terry Rohn's and, and John Lindsay's class over the course of the last, oh, four months because they were our newest steak cookers. And I'm telling you, John has had so many people that have taken his class. He had four of the top 10 cookers this weekend that took his class uh, that were top 10 finishers that all took his class and beat him. You know, he's done got beat by – the people that's taken his class <laughs> the last three weeks in a row, he's had multiple of people that have taken his class in the top 10 and they beat him. He's been like 10th. I think the other day, the time before that, I think he had a third or a fifth or something. And, but it just goes to show these guys are laying it all out. I told him, I said, don't come in here with no two, three year old recipes. I don't want that. I said, I want these recipes to be your newest, most current recipes that you are doing right now to win. Because I said, that is going to be an attribute to how well we're doing. When you go in and people take your class and they go and they hit the winner's circle, man, that ain't going to do nothing but sell you a lot more classes. And it shows that we are the authority when it comes to barbecue class, that these aren't some old recipe, something that's not winning. We want people that know they can take these classes, they can go out and win. And if you go look at on our website, we got a little review tab over there. We've got like 25, 26 reviews. And I mean, all five stars, people are just ranting and raving. The backyard cookers, you're just saying like, this is the most amazing barbecue that I've ever cooked. The competition cookers, like I've learned so much. When you start getting that kind of feedback and about 75% of our customers have come back and have bought multiple classes, we knew we had a success once we started seeing that, I've got people that have bought every single class that we have. I've got people that want, like steak cookers. They've taken all the steak classes. <laughs> That's what I've kind of told John and, and Terry Rohn. I said, you guys, I said, I'm telling you what, y'all probably need to go buy everybody's video because all the guys are jumping in there and they're buying everybody's video. Well, now they're picking the minds of all these champions right. and they're, they're cherry picking <laughs> and they take this technique and this and this and, and they're making it their own. And I'm telling you, I think it's going to be tough for some of these guys. Right. Because they've got, they've done pick the minds of all of these steak grill masters or barbecue pit masters. And they're making it their own. And that's, that's hard to compete with. But they don't care. They, it was about growing the sport. 
and it looks good for them. They're selling a lot of classes. I had Brett Galloway on not too long ago, but I think back in, I think February or something, I had him on and just uh -huh. talking about the growth of the SCA. It was right before COVID, you yeah. know, because it was like, you know, he was talking about how they had over 500 and something, uh, you know, events scheduled for the year. And that was, you know, and yeah. it was like right before COVID hit. And, yeah. it was, you know, I'm sure a lot of them, I know a lot of the local ones here in Florida got canceled and stuff, but yeah. they're starting to come back out again. But just the growth in the last six years of the SCA competitions. And, you know, I've talked to like Malcolm Reed and some of the other competitors. And one of the things they love about them is that they're like, what they told me is they're like what the barbecue competitions used to be when yeah. they were one day events and, you know, family oriented and, not as serious as some of the big KCBS things where it's right. a all weekend affair. They can pull up, you know, on a Friday night and, you know, cook, cook go and, and head go, off the and next go, day, go head, somewhere head else off yeah. and have fun and sit yeah. around and, you know, yeah. BS with their boys, have a couple beers and celebrate eating some good steaks. And the, so um, it just seems it's a lot more simplistic, a little bit more fair because they, yeah. they got to pick the meat, you know, the, the meat's provided from the right. competition, not right bringing their own, you know, Wagyu, the, wa to yeah, the, yeah. exactly. The yeah. uh, Wagyu gold, you know, and right. he's bringing in a, a select from Walmart. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and that's what makes it tough, you know, and that, and that's the thing. And we talk about that in these classes and stuff. So, and that's what we're trying to do. We're hoping that these classes, especially the barbecue stuff, because we know the steak stuff's growing like crazy. And we have had, I can't tell you the hundreds of steak classes that we have sold over the course of the last probably even over the last three or four months because they're understanding these guys are jumping in and, you know, I took his class and I'm winning. I took his class and I'm winning. I took it and every, the word gets out and everybody's jumping in to take the classes. And, and so that sport is growing good. We've got a lot of people for the first time that are jumping in excited because they think they can go compete. But I think we're starting to see some of these backyard people. I've, I've got a couple guys, man, there's a guy in California, oh, James. He's done, he's a backyard guy. He took my backyard barbecue class. He's done bought three of the pitmaster all access classes and done bought two of the steak guys classes. I'm telling you some of the food he's turned it out. I said, man, if you were to jump into a competition, you'd be tough to beat. And so we're hoping that maybe eventually some of these guys may get more involved in the barbecue stuff. Some of the people that are discouraged, maybe wanting to get out, they take a class, they get reinvigorated. They can jump back in because they're winning. It's just making it a lot more competitive where everybody can get in and do pretty well. So, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's been a blast doing all this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm happy with the way that everything is going. We've got some amazing, we've got two state cookers that we're in talks with right now about coming on. Uh, we've got another really big name barbecue guy said he wants to come on in the fall and he is a big time name as well. So we, we feel like we, we just have people reaching out to us and wanting to like, okay, how can I be part of this? And, you know, we're looking at credentials, you know, if you've got some, you know, world champions or a lot of grand champions and, you know, very, very successful, you know, obviously we want to take a look at you. So, uh, and somebody that's current and that's, that's cooking, that's out on the trail that, you know, that you're still relevant. Uh, those are the kind of people that we're looking for. So uh, it, it's been an amazing, amazing deal. Um, I think the way that we've set it up with the social media, the, the Facebook interaction where they can talk to these guys, the simplicity of the classes of how detailed they are and, and the camera angles and asking them right when you think that I, what's, what's, what is he doing there? I'm pretty much well, I'm going to ask him that question because <laughs> I don't let nothing go by these guys. I'm constantly asking questions. It's, it keeps the class moving. It keeps it where you're entertained and you follow along and, you know, I've had several people like, man, I was wondering what he was going to do. And then next thing you know, you ask that question. And, and that's what we, that's what we really tried to bring out in these classes. So, um, been a lot of fun. We we're excited about our second year. Um, we are about to launch our first podcast. It's going to be barbecue champs live show. And it's going to be uh, on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. So our first one will be tomorrow with our very own John Lindsay and uh, the SEA cooker that's just been killing it. Uh, he'll be on, uh, I think, after that. Next week after that, we're going to have Lee Hickle. want to follow up with Lee because he just finished number two in the IBCA Points Championship uh, this year. So 
Uh, we've got so many world champion pit masters and grill masters. We've got about 12, 13 different people here. And we're wanting to just, we've got so many, we can roll one of these in every four months before we could get to all of them, or every three months before we could get to everybody. So it'll give us a chance to kind of pick the minds of these pit masters and state grill masters. Uh, it'll be live where you can ask questions and stuff like that. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a huge success. Now, is it going to be uh, yeah. on your Facebook page? It's going to be on our Facebook. Yeah, okay. go look us up. It's Barbecue Champs Academy. Yeah, I got it on the screen. Go the like screen. us. Um, make sure that you're following us. Get your notifications. And if you scroll down, you'll probably see there it is. It's almost here. Tomorrow we launch our inaugural uh, Barbecue Champs live show. And it's going to be 7 o'clock Central. We're expecting to have a huge turnout for this. It's been highly anticipated for some time. We've been working on it and trying to get everything nailed down where I could do it. It's just, I'm so busy trying to get all this stuff done. And um, we may even give some product away. I'm gonna talk to some of the guys that have rubs and sauces and we may try to have some drawings for some rubs and some sauces and stuff like that. Um, Are you so gonna do is, any kind of Q and A during that or at all? Oh yeah, yeah. If okay. you got any questions, I mean, it's, it's gonna be live. So if there's a question that you want, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer some of those questions. I mean, my deal is now is I'm going to kind of let the pit masters get to meet them, get to know them. You know, what do you cook? What style do you cook? We're going to talk about that a little bit. So they'll know a little bit more about the style that they cook for going into their competition. So like if you was, well, who's your KCBS cookers? Well, that'd be Corey Mike's, you know, that'd be Mark Lambert. That would be the Sterling Smith. And, you know, it would be the David Bosca, my IVCA guys are these. And, so, you know, what kind of grills? We'll talk about some grills. We'll, we'll talk about some of their equipment. Well, I'll pick their minds a little bit. What got you in? What, what some of the, give me one pro tip that really stands out that we could let somebody know about. It's going to be some informative stuff. Uh, I think it'll be something good and entertaining. You know, people right now, they're, they're just dying for any kind of, anything to watch barbecue related that's not reruns that's stuck on TV. <laughs> right. And we feel like uh, this is the, yeah. Uh, and we uh, feel like this is the perfect platform for this. It's not the, Puffy Stone and, you know, yeah, everybody's yeah. sick of them guys. <laughs> yeah, so we feel like with the with what we've got and the, the group of men, and I don't want to forget Shauna, ladies that we have, um, I think that we've got something that could be a, a really fun show. We hope that everybody will tune in to it. Uh, I, and like I said, we, we may try to work in some, some free giveaways along the way and, and some rubs and some sauces or this or that. And, See if we can just intrigue people a little bit more, give them a little bit of barbecue knowledge, and uh, that may help their abilities to get better. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to be doing, that was the first part. The second thing is I will be doing a live, it's going to be called Barbecue Champs Queuing Live. And I am going to be cooking, doing product reviews. I have had so many people want to know product reviews, which rubs this, how does this rub pair with that? So we have got some amazing partners that have just come on barbecue champs in the last month. And, um, you know, we've got B and B charcoal. We got lumberjack, uh, coal charcoal out of uh, Georgia. Uh, they are new to the scenes here in the United States and they just like, man, we'd love for you to do a product review for us. They got some amazing, big, nice chunks of lump charcoal. Uh, we've got, um, B extreme who is so big in the SEA state competitions. Uh, yeah, pull up on your, on your website, scroll down to one of the bottom of the page, go to our website. You'll see all of them listed there. Um, but they are there. I've got a, a real good friend of mine who does a lot of IBCA competitions, Brian Crawford. Uh, he owns a, uh, a line of, uh, and go just down to the very, very, very bottom. You'll see our, our partners that we've got down there. There we go. So Brian's got Crawford barbecue pits uh, product. He's, he's made some amazing pit sprays or, you know, spritzes like a peach and he's got, Oh my gosh, he's got like this Memphis spray and all these different flavors and stuff. And uh, so, and he's got an amazing line of rubs too. And a lot of people don't know about it. So we're wanting to do a product review for him. He also owns that Lone Star barbecue pro shop. And he's got about every dadgum thing you can possibly imagine in rubs and sauces. I mean, if it's out there and it's popular, he's got it. So 
we'll end up doing product reviews. Uh, uh, John Lindsay has got a new rub out that he did. It's all queued up. Uh, we will do product reviews for him. He's trying to get his website up. That all queued up stuff is some amazing stuff on steaks. He's got that along with his uh, big uh, beef rub. I think he calls it, I think it's big red, big beef or big red. And uh, it's, he just came out with it like a couple weeks ago. So we're going to do some product reviews. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up and do a live cooking show on Facebook. We're going to stream it live. You can ask questions. Uh, we're, that's why we're working on getting our internet speed quicker so we don't have any buffering and things going along. We're hoping to have that installed. I'm hoping this week, and if it is, we'll get started with it. But we're going to taste the rubs of these companies. We're going to see what the flavor profiles are. And then we're going to say, okay, what will that pair best with? And then I'm going to cook something up. We're going to have three different camera angles. So you're going to be, when I'm talking, you're going to see it. We're going to have another camera that's going to be up close as you see me prepping it. And then we're going to put it in the grill. Uh, and then you'll see how we go about cooking. We'll pull one off that we've already got ready, put it up on the cut board. So it's going to be a little class that we're hoping to be able to wrap up in 25, 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes, but it, it'll be detailed little recipes for some fun little stuff to cook for the backyard. It's all going to be cooked on more than likely on a, an old smoky or a Weber uh, original little 22 inch kettle or a pellet cooker. We're going to just use backyard grills. And, um, you know, if we have to use a 22 inch WSM, if we're going to smoke something, we may do that to kind of give them a timeline of how to go about doing that as well. But that's going to be, I don't know if we're going to do it on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Uh, if you're following us on Facebook, we'll always let you know a couple of days in advance, when are we going to do it? Cause a lot of it's going to be weather related. We're going to be outside and we've got right. a huge awning that we're under. So if I have bad weather, I may have to move it up a day or, you know, before or after. But it'll be called Barbecue Champs Academy Q and Live. And I'm very, very excited to start that as our second phase. We want to do the podcast. We want to do the Q and Live product reviews. We feel like, you know, anybody can do a product review on their stuff. If it's their own stuff. Yeah, that's, that's great. But let's face it, it's going to be good, right? Because it's your product. But I think an independent third party doing a product reviews and, and pairing everything off, I think would, would make some for some very good videos and really give you a good, honest opinion of what these flavor profiles are and, and what they are. And I, you know, I may not be a world champion, but I am a three time IBCA uh, Louisiana champion. So I like the uh, rub idea because that's one of the most intimidating things that people go into a barbecue store or even just the spice aisle at the grocery store sometimes yeah. look at, I mean, I, I've been to Atlanta grill company up in Atlanta and Roswell. They got a, uh, they're one of the biggest ones in the Southeast and they have four whole aisles of sauces and rubs and it's right. Like, there's so many of them out there and you're like, yeah. you know, Oh my God, you know, yeah, what, it's what, overwhelming. What, it's yeah, overwhelming. It, it, yeah, so, it anymore. so what we're wanting to do is, okay, you know, be extreme. He sent me all his rubs, got a brand new sauce, brand new, just came out and I was tasting, I was like, man, this is some good stuff. I even used it. One of my competitions and then nailed the first place rib. So, um, so that's the thing. I can open up all these. I can taste them. Okay, this is a salty, savory. This is this. This one doesn't have a lot of heat. This one's got a little heat, so we can use this as a finishing dust to go on the top after we get everything done. So my whole deal is is to put a palatable flavor profile together, as I like to call them, flavor bombs. You probably heard that a lot yeah. in the backyard barbecue class. We want flavor bombs. We want stuff that's very well balanced, that's just incredibly good, and so we can say, hey, you can, if you want to cook, we're going to do maybe like a, a meatloaf or we're going to do this or we'll do that. There's all different things that we're going to do. We're, we're looking at doing a smoked meatball sub with, the, you know, a pepper jack provolone style cheese on it. With So we'll put this rub with this. We want to find a sauce that would go good with that. So we don't want one that's sweet because this is a, a meatball sub, but we don't want it so spicy. We're going to try to find that perfect little sauce that will pair off very well with that. So there's little things that we're going to put together that'll be quick backyard barbecue recipes that you can cook on a, either a grill or a pellet cooker, something that's pretty simple. During COVID, when everybody's staying at home and so many people are staying at home right now, you know, they need some, some good stuff to cook. So yeah, we're not going to go like crazy, crazy, crazy into getting into our backyard barbecue classes. It won't be quite as detailed as those. We're just going to kind of show you the basics. Here's what we're doing. Put a little rub, do a little this. Yeah. 
It's like and, some appetizer. It's an appetizer for the uh, main event. Yeah, just kind of giving you, you know, we want to help somebody. Like, okay, this is what this tastes like. Now, you can go, if you can cook, you can go cook it. But we're giving them some ideas of, man, this really does pair well. We'll show them how to do it and give them some timelines. It's not going to be the in-depth stuff like in our backyard barbecue class right. and stuff. So, well, Mike, anyway. I think we've been about an hour or so. Yeah. I, we could probably talk about this uh, for another five, but I want to, uh, I got to go cook my yep. dinner and I know you yep. probably got, you got some stuff yep. going, uh, with some of your, some of your guys with uh, John, I think. So yeah, yeah. Get ready for him. So I do appreciate Darren. You let I wanna, us in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being on. I want everybody to make sure they check out barbecue champs.com. It's uh, like I said, BBQ I've been taking, uh, yeah, BBQ champs.com. I've been taking the, uh, classes of the backyard classes and they're you know very good very well put together the uh what they can teach you in the barbecue the backyard barbecue classes will get you uh you know hooked on getting the other classes for sure um, have, you en- stuff. have you enjoyed the backyard classes oh yeah i really have yeah. uh, they're definitely worth the money uh, to get started especially make sure you check out the uh, barbecue champs facebook page so you can Get on on the podcast tomorrow, and also yep. the, and uh, also class. follow some. We got a YouTube channel. We haven't really tried to push our YouTube, so go to our YouTube channel, Barbecue Champs Academy, and subscribe to that. Because as we load these up on our Facebook, they'll also get loaded up on our awesome uh, YouTube channel as well. So you don't have to scroll down so far to find them. And uh, yeah, yeah I've I, I found over the years that you know Facebook people usually stay on Facebook, and YouTube people stay on yeah. YouTube. It's weird, yeah. but they, they but, do. Thanks for being on. I Thank you, sir. It. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Thanks. Yeah, again. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, buddy. All right. Take care. Take care. Well, thanks again for joining us here on the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I want to thank Mike Steele again from bbqchamps.com. Make sure you check out the, uh, the classes that they offer. Follow them on Facebook. Make sure you follow us, the Fire and Water Cooking Channel, on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you check out the YouTube channel and the podcast. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next episode.